So this is the Sony ZV-1. It's either the world's greatest YouTube vlogging and content creation camera ever, or it's the world's worst camera for anything ever, period. I did an in-depth review of this camera, but also making sure I compared it to its main competition like the Canon M50 and all major point and shoot cameras. I have a lot to say on this camera, some really good and some outright terrible things to say. So without further ado, let's get into it. By the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is River. I'm a professional director and cinematographer. So when I review a camera, I actually do an in-depth review and I make a review that's worth your time. And I make sure that all of it is packed with information. So it makes sense to watch it all the way through. And we cover anything and everything to do with cameras on this channel from beginner cameras to high-end professional cameras, plus teaching you guys how to make better photos and videos every day. So we're gonna start off this video strictly talking about the video features in this camera. I am going to talk about the photo features, but later in this video, for a very specific reason, you will see why. There are two main features in this camera that make it amazing for vloggers and content creators, but nothing that special for the average shooter. In terms of frame rate and resolution, this camera does full HD at 24 all the way up to 120 frames per second. 120 frames per second is going to give you buttery smooth slow motion. To just have that in such a small, tiny little point and shoot camera, I'm pretty impressed. But what makes it really special is that this camera actually has an ultra slow motion mode which shoots all the way up to 1000 frames per second. That is bonkers and we're gonna do an in-depth test of that later in the video. But what really impresses me is that the Sony camera has amazing colors right out of the box, which is shocking because I compared it to my Canon G7X Mark II. Now Canon is known for having amazing colors, but the Sony colors actually looked better. So here's a quick little test. I actually think that the Canon camera does not look nearly as good as the Sony. I find the Sony camera, I just, my skin looks better. It looks more tanned. Where the Canon camera, it almost looks a little flat. I'm really shocked by this because I constantly talk about how good the Canon colors are but Sony has upgraded their colors in this new camera and gotta say, it looks better. One thing that I have to mention is that the Sony camera also has S-Log and Hybrid Log Gamma, which are high-end professional color grading profiles. So if you wanna make your colors really cinematic, you have that option, but I really can't imagine a lot of people wanting to do that with a point-and-shoot camera. However, because you have those color profiles available to you in this camera, this camera would actually make a really good B camera to your more high-end professional Sony cameras. What most people are probably gonna get this camera for is the 4K video in this camera. It does 4K at both 24 and 30 frames per second without any sort of crop, which is a big deal because its main competitor, the Canon M50 and most Canon cameras actually end up cropping their camera once you go into 4K. So this is the only camera in this price point that you can get 4K without that massive crop. And that brings me perfectly to the lens in this camera. This camera has a 24 to 70 millimeter lens built right in, which means you cannot change it out, but that's okay because the lens in this camera is made by Zeiss and it looks fantastic. Also, this lens has an f-stop of 1.8 to 2.8, which gives you that nice juicy blurry background effect, plus it's really, really good in low light. And that is probably going to be one of the biggest reason that vloggers are going to pick up this camera. Because with an aperture of f1.8 to 2.8, it's going to give you that beautiful blurry background effect, and it's just going to make all of your vlogs and content look more cinematic. And if that wasn't enough, Sony knows that people love that juicy blurry depth of field, so they've actually added another feature in this camera that actually adds digital depth of field to really send that cinematic, heavy bokeh look home. In fact, they even added a button at the top to turn it on and off. Let's do a quick test. So this is without the depth of field effect added. Now it's really subtle, but boom. Do you guys see it? Off, on. If you guys just look at that Supreme gun right behind me, and you'll see like how the words on that gun get blurry. On, off. Personally, I like it. It's very subtle, but it does the job. And in case you're worried about shooting at such a wide open aperture and having too much light, this camera also has a built-in ND filter to cut out your light. So you can easily shoot at f1.8 
without any worries. The only thing that I don't like about the lens in this camera is the zoom range. 24 to 70 is actually a decent zoom range, but that's something that I would expect from a camera that's three or four years old. For a modern camera, I would want to see something like 24 to 200, 24 to 105, especially when Sony makes cameras with that zoom range. So I'm disappointed to see that this camera has such a lackluster zoom range. Overall, the lens is really sharp and looks just as good as other Sony point and shoot cameras, which are like the Lamborghinis of the point and shoot camera world. But what really impressed me was that the lens was able to keep up with that super fast autofocus. And the autofocus in this camera is phenomenal. When it comes to autofocus, Canon and Sony are killing it. They're like the Google and Apple of the camera world, especially when it comes to autofocus. And I had a slight feeling that maybe the autofocus in this camera wouldn't be as good as like the professional Sony cameras, but I was wrong. The autofocus in this camera is amazing. It has intelligent face, eye, and object tracking, so the autofocus is literally set it and forget it. But it does have one really interesting autofocus feature that I was pretty impressed by, and I actually have not seen in any other camera. And this feature also makes this camera amazing for both vloggers and content creators. And that's actually the product showcase feature. Now, normally if you're a vlogger or a content creator, you're probably talking about products and holding them up to the camera. So if I just do this with even something small like AirPods, it'll snap straight to the AirPods and then back to my face. To the AirPods, back to my face. To the AirPods, back to my face. I'm impressed and if you're someone that talks a lot about products, this is going to make your life a whole lot easier. And here's the thing, I might have some of you convinced that this is a camera that you should buy, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows because this is an expensive camera. Chances are, after you buy this camera with grips, battery, taxes, you're gonna end up spending over $1,000. And more than likely, you wanna make some of that money back. If you wanna learn how to take the camera that you're about to buy or the one that you already own and turn it into an asset that makes you money every single month, instead of it just being money that you spent and you'll never see again, check out the link in the description down below. The side hustle course was specifically made by me and my team to teach the average person that just has a passion and interest in photography and video and teach them how to have a high paying side hustle that makes them five figures every single month. And this is a side hustle that you can start without having to spend thousands of dollars on new camera equipment or hundreds of hours learning how to start it up and run it. If this sounds like you and you wanna turn your camera equipment into an asset that makes you money instead of money that you spent a long time ago and you're never going to see again, check out the link in the description down below. So with all that said, is this a good YouTube vlogging content creation camera? Yes, it really, really, really is. And there's one main reason that this becomes an amazing vlogging camera. It's actually the grip that this camera comes with. If you buy this camera without the grip, you are honestly getting half the camera. The biggest issue that most vloggers have with their camera is the fact that they can't see the buttons and they can't reach the buttons. This camera, by the way, has really big buttons, but by simply having these buttons right here at the front of the camera, being able to see everything, your job just feels so much easier. You just feel more confident creating and shooting when you can see exactly what you're hitting, you know you're recording, you know when you're focusing, you know exactly which way you're zooming. And this grip is controlled by Bluetooth, so you don't have to have it attached to control the camera. You can actually have this several feet away from the camera and control it remotely. This grip is a really nice way to start and stop the camera if you're walking into a shot, like you know if you're doing a Casey Neistat shot, or to zoom in and out of your frame to properly frame yourself up. And one of my favorite things about this camera is the fact that it has a separate button for photos and a separate button for video. I cannot tell you the amount of times I've been frustrated switching between photo and video mode on a Canon camera. Canon, can you please fix that? But by having two separate buttons for photo and video, it just makes my life so much easier. And one feature that Sony put in this camera specifically for vloggers and content creators is a way better internal microphone that Sony claims or wants you to think will sound as good as an external microphone. Unfortunately, Sony, it does not. It sounds pretty mediocre. My G7X Mark II sounds just about the same as the Sony camera, while my G7X Mark II is $430 and the Sony camera is $799. So do not buy this camera thinking you're gonna get amazing audio. It's mediocre. The slow motion in this camera is amazing. It already does 120 frames per second, but it also does 240, 480, and 960 frames per second. Now, the quality as you go higher up in the frame rate 
eventually becomes potato quality. So you can't really use it for professional work, but if you're a casual shooter that just wants to have fun with their point and shoot camera, this is an amazing feature to have. You probably don't care that much about the quality of it. You simply want to see something in dripping, buttery smooth slow motion. And honestly, it's pretty impressive and your friends will also be impressed. And the same feature is also in the Sony RX100 line. So if this camera isn't quite for you, I would definitely check out those cameras. And lastly, let's talk about photos because the photos part of this camera is really technically dense and only somebody that's watched it to the very end is going to care about what I have to say. The camera sensor in the Sony camera is nothing special. It's 20 megapixel one inch sensor, which is pretty much the same thing that I have in my G7X Mark II, which is a $430 camera. What makes the Sony camera really interesting is the fact that it can shoot 24 frames per second in photo. I don't mean 24 frames per second in video, it shoots 24 frames per second in photo. That is basically real time. It is not possible to miss a photo with this camera. When it comes to taking photos with this camera, it is basically faster than a professional camera. And it does all of this without a blackout screen, so you can see exactly what this camera is shooting. And when I compare the photo quality to my G7X Mark II, the photo quality is pretty similar. But when I compare it to my iPhone, the Sony camera absolutely blows it away. Now, I wouldn't really recommend somebody buy the Sony ZV-1 to replace a cheaper point and shoot camera, but for somebody that wants to replace their phone, nay, blow your phone out of the water, the Sony ZV-1 is going to do an amazing job, and the fact that it shoots so, so, so fast when it comes to photos makes it worth it for photos. But again, it is still not going to compare to a DSLR. So at the end of the day, is the Sony ZV-1 a good camera or is it the worst camera ever? And the truth is, if you're a vlogger or a content creator, it has all the features that you would need to make your job easy and make sure that you don't make any mistakes when you're filming. But if you're somebody that wants to just casually shoot photos and videos, or you're somebody that wants to record really artsy and stunning professional looking photos and videos, you don't need to spend this much money. It makes way more sense to buy a Sony a6500 or a Canon M50. You're going to spend less money and you're going to have interchangeable lenses and overall get better photo and video quality. This is a camera that only vloggers and content creators should buy. And I can see a lot of you guys having your proper professional DSLR camera and getting the Sony ZV-1 just to make your YouTube and vlogging content. Well guys, that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you're gonna pick up the Sony ZV-1, let me know in the comments down below and what you're gonna shoot with it. That's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.